What comes to mind when I say the word security? Is it cybersecurity? Data? Privacy security? Financial security? Whatever you chose, you're right. Security is a measure or response to a need. It is a state of being. I would like to have this level of security. And security is operational in nature. What tasks will we undertake to obtain that level of security? So we can generally agree on that we all want financial security, we want data privacy, we want computer security, whatever level of security, I think everybody can generally agree that we want those things. However, when it comes to a business and budgets being a, a large factor in this, there can be a lot of disagreements in how we get to that level of security or how do we obtain that state of being secure. Uh, organization to organization will differ in how they respond to risks and that dictates how they put their resources into security and what they feel their level of security needs to be. How do they manage and mitigate those risks differ greatly. So that presents a unique opportunity for us in the community if you're new to cybersecurity, getting in there and working in these organizations, there's new problems. I have yet to see one organization be the same as the last I've helped. So that's a really great thing, all these new challenges and experiencing new things. However, that resent, presents another challenge. There is no consistency. And when there's no consistency, it's hard to measure success from one organization to the next. There's a reason why there isn't really strong cyber laws in place that dictate how organizations must secure and protect our data because it's honestly really really hard to say who is doing good security it's pretty good it's pretty easy to say who's doing really bad security but there's definitely a really big gray area as to say who's doing it right and who's doing it wrong there's a big big uh, rift in between those two points so that presents a lot of challenges in the industry and in how we protect networks and computers. Um, and that is really the reason why we see on the news day in, day out, another organization has been breached because there isn't a clear cut standard that fits every business, every goal, every process that an organization needs to be, you know, to make money at the end of the day, right? Most organizations are for profit organizations and they need to make money. So money is their driving factor in what their risk is and what level of security they need. Now within the greater umbrella that is security, there's multiple enclaves. We've got information security, which is concerned about information the organization has. This can be both on physical paper, things that have been printed out, and both digital in databases, in file shares, on computers, USB drives. And information security is more concerned with uh, the data classification. Do we classify our data as being proprietary or uh, information that we can share with customers or information that should only be viewed by internal employees? Um, it is also concerned with uh, compliance requirements. We have to protect this information to this degree, i.e. Uh, HIPAA compliance. It's a healthcare uh, compliance framework that says we must protect patient records uh, with uh, encryption and uh, we must authenticate, authorize, and, and audit the systems that are protecting that data. So that's really within the realm of information security. How do we protect and manage and secure our information that's within our organization? And then we have cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is more concerned about the systems, devices, protocols, and how the, the organization from a digital perspective is communicating and working together. How can an adversary compromise that server and then move through the network to infect and attack other assets? That's more of a concern of cybersecurity. What are the tools, techniques, and methods that threats are employing? And how do I detect them and stop them from getting in our organization? Uh, we then have physical security, which is very important. A lot of people don't think of physical security as being related to cybersecurity, but it definitely does. It is very easy, for instance, to compromise a computer if I have physical access to it. If I have physical access to a computer in an, an organization, that organization is um, going to be compromised really quickly. Uh, just as an example, a lot of penetration testers will use something called a rubber ducky. 
Uh, it's essentially a USB that has a malicious script or software that when plugged into a computer, it will launch a piece of malware, a remote access tool that allows an attacker to remotely access the network. So you'd imagine a pen tester can dress up as a pizza delivery guy or delivery individual and show up at the organization and go near the nearest computer, maybe a, the reception area, and plug in that USB drive for 20 seconds and then walk out the door and they've gained network access through physical means to the organization. So physical security is very important to protecting both our employees, our data, our physical information, but also our digital assets being able to restrict people from physically accessing areas where digital devices are used, the server room, etc. We then have operational security, and this one is extremely important and, and unfortunately overlooked at times, but operational security is protecting uh, information about how you conduct your operations. If you work on a security operations team, you don't want to discuss the tools, capabilities, and limitations of your uh, security to people who are not need to know, right? That leak of information can cause a problem for you in the future. Or if you're in the middle of an investigation, you certainly don't want to talk about that investigation uh, with people who are not involved in that investigation from the get-go. And then last but not least, we have information and communication technology security. This is more commonly referred to as IT security, and the rest of this uh, module and course for that matter, we're just generally going to refer to it as IT security. But IT security is more about the strategies and the cohesive nature of bringing both information, cybersecurity, and some of these other security concepts together in a more operational program. We think of IT security as the the playbook, if you will, on how an organization will conduct itself from both physical, digital, and information security. One area of confusion uh, that you'll see online or whether you're reading uh, various people on LinkedIn or wherever you might find them is that a lot of people will say, I'm an InfoSec professional and I'm a cybersecurity professional. And they certainly will, maybe both. Uh, but there's a lot of issues and a lot of uh, confusion with having people sort of blend the two together. Just wanted to point out here that information security is the security practices and the level of security required to protect digital and analog information information that's on a computer, information that's printed out on paper, files, presentations, what, what have you. That is the role of information security, the tools and methods to secure that data. We then have cybersecurity, the data, communications, and information systems, the computers, the servers, the routers, and infrastructure devices that allow our network to communicate is more in the cybersecurity realm. And the cross section here is where IT security really blends them. A strong IT security or security program brings together good information security practices, good cybersecurity practices. So we're protecting our data, we're protecting our information, we're protecting the assets that process and transfer and communicate uh, that information. So all of that together really brings forth a good security program. So to get a better understanding of the different types of security and how they apply to the real world, let's go through a few scenarios. In this first one, we have a retailer that, that identified that over 50,000 customer records were stolen and essentially a hacker abused or exploited a known vulnerability in one of the servers. And this really is a super common thing that occurred. Uh, Equifax breach that I'm sure almost everybody knows uh, was an example of this. Equifax was compromised because they didn't update one of their servers and in the time between uh, vulnerability disclosure when the vulnerability was made public to the, the community and between when it was updated left way too much time for the adversary to uh, test and weaponize an exploit to get it functional to attack uh, those vulnerable systems. Uh, but in this case, uh, the, the retailer identified that all these customers' records were gone due to a exploited vulnerability. Uh, so cybersecurity in this manager really focus on the methods the attackers use to exploit access and exfiltrate data. So how did the attacker get into our network? What did they do when they were in the network? What did they gather? 
And how did they get it out of here? What tools and methods did they use? Information security would be more towards what did they take? Where was it located? Was it encrypted or secured? And who was affected? Was it customers? Was it internal intellectual property? Um, was it internal uh, company data? What have you? So even though we have one breach, there's different lenses that we use to look at it to understand and how to and, and further how to break down that problem to apply hopefully solutions in an expedient manner so that these things don't continue to happen. In this next example, we're going to look at an investigation. And essentially what's happening here, an organization did detect that they were breached. And an analyst, usually an incident responder, is analyzing uh, the initial data and they're trying to scope what's going on. But in this uh, activity here, they're trying to identify what machines are compromised so they can effectively scope that. And they're using certain tools and techniques to limit the likelihood that the attacker is tipped off or made aware of this investigation. Uh, more often than not, when an adversary learns that they've been discovered in an organization, they might resor resort to drastic measures. Uh, there's been instances of attackers then just grabbing you know, all the data they can and just trying to exfiltrate it, get it out of the network as fast as they can, or there's instances where attackers go to, they started just destroying things. Uh, they, they were detected and instead of just taking information, they just burned it to the ground. They started disabling computers, deleting critical files, uh, wiping data, drives, uh, databases, uh, really, really harmful stuff to an organization. So it's very important, right, that we don't tip off these attackers. So there's very, uh, there's very specific tools and techniques that we'll employ to limit that uh, noise we might make while doing an investigation. But breaking this down further, uh, cybersecurity really affected, again, like the last one, what systems and networks were accessed by the adversary? How did they do it? What tools did they use? That's really the role of cybersecurity. And again, what data was accessed? Why are they here and what are they taking? That really goes down to information security. What data and information are the adversaries trying to obtain? Uh, but what's new in this scenario is operational security, ensuring that the adversary is not made aware of our activities. We do, we certainly do not want them to know that we have detected them. So we, that gives us time to do our investigation, to do that level of analysis that's required to understand what's going on so that we can scope the threat appropriately and in one fell swoop, remove the, that network access that this attacker has obtained. Uh, if we fail to properly scope and remove the attacker the first time uh, and they have maintained access, even when we think we kick them out, it can turn very bad for us uh, based on you know some of the things I had mentioned previously about an adversary breaking the network, deleting data, uh, various other things that could occur. So this next scenario is a little bit different. We're talking about security operations. So we're not dealing with a breach uh, you know, leak of, of customer records or we're doing incident response. This is about uh, being more proactive in this scenario. Essentially, the organization is very aware of the trend of ransomware or essentially malware that when it executes, gathers all the local files it can, whether those are on the computer or the network uh, file shares that the computer is connected to, and it begins to uh, encrypt all of that data so that it is not accessible to the organization. And just like the name uh, states, they hold that data for ransom. The organization has to pay them to get that data back. So security operations, IT security here is looking to, to be more proactive about how we secure that. So cybersecurity practices and skills are brought to bear when we think about how does ransomware get into networks? How does it infect networks? What are the tools and techniques and methods that ransomware is, is, is deployed and used? And then what does ransomware go after? What types of data? What folders and files does it go after? What types of file shares does it go after? That would fall within information security. What, how, why, and where do they go after that data? Or how do they go after that data? And then last but not least, IT security. This is when we're really starting to see IT security come together because it's more operational. We're talking about how do we build up the tools, people, and processes to manage that risk or that threat 
of of a ransomware infection which is uh, potentially high depending on the organization they might be concerned that you know it's only a matter of time we're going to get a ransomware infection so we've got to bolster our defenses to meet that that threat head on so in this next example we're going to talk about a disgruntled employee this is probably one of the more challenging uh, threats an organization would face because this is somebody we believe to be you know on our side they've already got access to the network and because they are an allowed individual their account and the activities they do are harder to identify as being malicious because they don't stand out uh, really malicious activity is relatively easy to identify in a network if you're monitoring it appropriately because it just doesn't look like anything else going on but when you have a network administrator like bob here who's disgruntled it's very, very challenging to identify uh, malicious activity with an authorized individual. So to protect the organization uh, when they let go of, of an individual or resource uh, like Bob here, they did it on a Friday afternoon, which is always a good uh, HR practice. Uh, we immediately revoked the credentials and physical access. Removing the badge and credentials uh, ensured that uh, we lose, or Bob lost access to the the servers the machines the computers and physical access to the server room you can do a quick google of disgruntled admin on google and you will find a lot of photos of cut cables destroyed servers and stories of data being stolen or deleted and businesses being shuttered because they simply couldn't recover from one disgruntled admin who uh, wreaked havoc on the organization so the policies and practices on how we revoke and control access to systems, how we audit that access and look for malicious behavior falls within cybersecurity. Who has access to systems? What are they doing? How are they connecting to those assets? What you know, remote tools and utilities are they using? Remote desktop? Are they using Windows remote management? Whatever they're using, right? That falls within cybersecurity, the tools and methods uh, that, that is being used in the organization. Uh, information security, how it is really related to what um, you know what that user is uh, has access to, what data they have access to. Role-based access restricts a user to access only the information that they need. So having good role-based security in an organization is key to having good information security. So hopefully Bob here had an administrator role that was applied that restricted that access to certain data so that also when this person is let go, we can quickly remove that role and ensure that all access to that data has been removed at the same time. We certainly don't want to forget that, oh, he also had access to this other system that had this data, but we had to go in that system and manually remove it. No, that is, that is not a good way to have things done. And unfortunately, there are a lot of organizations that operate like that. But having role-based access is great for good information security uh, uh, management to ensure that, you know, that data is not going to be stolen and we can remove that access quickly. And again, physical security, removing that badge access limits Bob's ability to get back into the business, get access to the servers and cause damage or, you know, who knows, maybe Bob's a great guy and, well, it's not saying maybe, he probably is a great guy and he's not going to do any of these things, but it's better to be safe than sorry.